Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of We Get Technical and yes I finally got Duke Nukem 3D on the game show and let me tell you it wasn't easy and it wasn't without its issues. It seems like every game that you try to get on the game show has a different method and it's kind of hard for someone that does not understand command line and does not understand the Linux environment or Unix, I should say. I am no expert, but I like to make these videos because I think that visually it is easier to learn. And as I get them on the game shell, I want to teach you. So sit back, relax, and let's find out exactly how we get Duke Nukem 3D on the game shell step by step. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of We Get Technical. And before I get into this episode, I'd like to say don't forget to let me spend my money so you don't waste yours by hitting that subscribe button. And do consider hitting that bell so you keep informed as to new videos that I am uploading on the We Deem channel. Now, as I said in the intro of this video, look how bright that is. Let me lower the lights, well, not turn it off. I finally got Duke Nukem 3D on the game shell, and it wasn't without its issues. It was difficult. It took me a little while. I put it down and stopped. And then I ended up getting Jazz the Jackrabbit. All right, I had to lower that brightness. It was way too bright, but I put down the Duke Nukem 3D idea of getting it on the game show and got open Jazz. And there was a tutorial for that video. If you haven't seen it, it will be up here or in the description down below and at the end of this video. But I finally got Duke Nukem 3D on here. And I was excited because this is definitely one of my favorite retro PC games. I had some issues when I was first doing it, but I finally got it. So let's go through each step and I'll try my best to explain it in detail. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave those in the comments down below. Also on any of the game show videos, if you have other games that you have gotten to work on the game show, especially DOS, because that's the whole reason why I bought the Clockwork Game Show was for DOS games. Please leave those in the comments down below. All right, let's dive right into this. The first step is going to be to install the dependencies needed to run Duke Nukem. Now, at any time in this video, I will be leaving the code at the bottom of the video. So you can go ahead and follow that because sometimes it's kind of hard to read on the actual screen there in the command line. There I will also leave tips as to what each command means. Alright, now on to the second step and that is to go ahead and get the eduke32 files and on eduke's website they suggest that you build from the source. So in order to do that, we're going to use the wget command. And as you may notice, two times I accidentally typed the code in wrong. The code, as I said, will be at the bottom of the screen. So go ahead and follow that. And then as soon as that installs the directory we need, we'll be moving on to the next step. Now on to the third step of this process, and that's to go into the directory that was created. You do that by typing cdsvn.eduke32.com forward slash eduke32 forward slash and hit enter. Man, that was fast. Next, when you're in that directory, you're going to want to build from the source code, and you do that by typing make and then hit enter. Enter. Now this is going to take about 20 minutes, so maybe you want to go play your favorite retro game. Alright, the next step is to copy the eduke32 file to the duke 3D directory on your game shell. And you do that by using the cp command. Next, you want to head into the game shell directory on your game shell. And you do that by using the cd command. Now we're going to create the script file that tells the game shell where the duke3d game is by using the echo command. 
Now next you want to tell the eDuke32 software where to find the actual Duke script and you do that by using the echo command as well. Now on the forum website I noticed they type Duke space Nukem space 3D dot SH. I was having an issue with getting that to work all that time. I changed it to simply Duke 3D dot SH. Make sure that the command you're typing is correct to the one at the bottom of the screen and everything should work fine. Alright, the next step is to copy your legitimate Duke Nukem 3D game file and you could do that by searching the internet for that. But you want to go down to the search bar on Windows and type run and then enter the run command. And in there, you're going to type backslash backslash your IP address for your specific game shell backslash games then hit enter make sure you're connected to the wi-fi that'll enter the games folder then you want to look for the duke 3d games folder open that drag your copy of duke nukem into this folder then we get to adding the icon i will leave a link to the icon down in the description below now you're going to drag that icon onto your games folder there Type cd space backslash to get back to the root directory of your game shell. Now you want to head into your games directory on the SD card. You do that by typing cd forward slash home forward slash cpi forward slash games. Hit enter. Once you're in there, you're going to have your duke3d.png. Make sure it is spelled exactly how I have it up on the screen. Now you're going to want to go and use the move command and you do that by typing MV which is the move command duke3d.png now it has to be a PNG file because it needs to be transparent then space forward slash home forward slash CPI forward slash apps forward slash launcher forward slash skins forward slash default forward slash menus and forward slash game shell now the last step of this process we're finally at the end and it's time to clean up some unwanted files that was left on your game shell during the process and we do that by typing the remove command which is r m dash r tilde forward slash svn dot eduke 32.com this is the directory that was installed early on in the process we do not need that anymore so we're going to go ahead and delete that after that's removed it's time to restart and get some duke nukem in and there you have it that's all the steps required to get duke nukem on the game show I, I had so much trouble getting it on there but I really think it was the fact that when I was creating the script file I was following the forum and it was Duke space Nukem space 3d dot sh and that was creating a bunch of directories and it was not finding that Duke Nukem 3d script file so it was not loading the game who knows, maybe I also had a bad copy of Duke Nukem.grp. I don't know. Either way, I got it to work with the steps that I showed you in this video. Duke Nukem is working on the game show. I'm excited to have it on the game show. Now, the problem is the forum really does help. The forum.clockworkpi.com. But most of us don't understand exactly why we're doing it. All right, the thing died. The problem with the game shows, as soon as you plug the charger into it, it automatically turns this on. Once you pull it out, pull it out, ha ha. Once you take that plug out, when it's completed charging, it does not shut the game shell off. So if you don't do it yourself, you get a dead game shell. Either way, as you can see, Duke Nukem is working on the game shell. Any questions about any of the steps in this tutorial, please leave them in the comments down below. I'll get back to you as soon as possible possible as i said the issue with the form is that most of us do not understand what's going on there so we're just following a bunch of steps and when it comes time to us trying to get our own games on the game show 
We actually don't know what to do. I personally am currently trying to learn Linux command line and different scenarios. So maybe I can start to get these games on the game show myself because there are a lot of DOS games I would like to see if they work on here, but they are not on the forum. So if I can learn how to do this myself and learn different scenarios, maybe it'll be possible for me to get them on here without having to use the forum and maybe I'll be a little bit more intelligent and versed in Linux. Either way, if you liked what was contained in this video, as always, please consider hitting that thumbs up. If you didn't, you know you can always hit that button people have before. If you hit the thumbs down, please leave some feedback, constructive feedback, in the comments down below so I can do better next time. Consider sharing this video amongst your friends and all your social media if you found it to be of some sort of value. And as always, don't forget to let me spend my money so you don't waste yours by hitting that subscribe button.